Hey there and welcome. So, little video where we wanted to take a moment to introduce a new team member. We're really excited that Zaytoun Bakari is going to be joining the Apps Events team. So, welcome Zaytoun, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Awesome. We wanted to take a chance to kind of uh, obviously introduce you, uh, get people familiar with, with the wider team. Um, so yeah, that's what we wanted to do. So first things first, I don't know if you want to take a moment to kind of introduce yourself, kind of your background, and then we'll get started and get a bit deeper. Awesome. So I'm Zaytun Bakari. Um, I'm the ATC lead, EdTech lead um, in the Northwest of England. Um, and that's my current role as well as doing what I'm doing with apps events. Um, my background is uh, I'm a human biologist by background um, and a physicist. Um, so I was teaching in secondary for 14 years um, and still doing a bit of teaching. I've, I've, I've done some this morning as well, but um, it's nice to be in the classroom. But that's my background. That's 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 where I've come from. Um, and, and, and so far, that's, this is where I am. And now with the EdTech role, um, this is my next step and my next journey. Yeah, so obviously your your role encompasses EdTech across your across your trust, a similar role to that that I had um, in a trust sort of further down south in the UK than yourself. Uh, so how did that kind of EdTech journey start? Um, what's been the trajectory from classroom teaching through to supporting so many people with EdTech? Yeah, so um, that journey started about six, maybe seven years ago. Um, we were on a parents' evening, one evening, and the deputy head teacher at that time turned around and said, well, we need to figure out a way that we could use technology to reduce our costs, basically, across the school. And we were at a point where we were about to renew various licenses across the school. And um, he mentioned Google for Education. And that was the first time I heard of Google for Education. Um, and I was like, okay. So I went away, did some research. Um, and, we, and I came back to him and said, I like the look of this Google for Education. Um, and let's start, start having a look at what, what it encompasses. And then we were very, very fortunate to start to really drill down into what it is and all the different apps and start to use some of those apps and, and see how they can be used within the classroom and teaching and, and all the rest of it. Um, but then I got um, one amazing opportunity and that was to go to Zurich. Um, and it was actually an apps events boot camp that was happening. Um, and there were three of us, three teachers who went and we went and we, it was the first time we experienced how far ahead some of those European schools are with the use of technology in the classroom and especially with the use of Google for education. Um, and it, it just lit a light basically and we brought it all back and we said right this is the way we want to go forward with this um and from there the passion grew so i got my level one educator oh this is all right i'll go for level two educator um and then i was like right i need to work towards this trainer now i did it very traditionally i i did all the the background training and, and read up on everything and, and did the application. It took me about a year to get myself prepped and ready for this trainer. And then as soon as I got into the trainer and became a trainer, it just opened up this whole community of people who I never knew existed. Um, and, and majority of them being on Twitter. So from there, the journey just carried on going. Um, I then, good a year or so after, I thought, well, the next step is an innovator. And um, I came up with an idea across the school and I thought, well, this is a nice idea for our CPD. Let's take this to Google uh, and see if I get in. I was rejected first. I was so gutted I was rejected. All uh, the best people are rejected <laughs> the first time they apply to Innovator Academy. Yeah. Just putting that out there. <laughs> and then um, I went and applied again in 2019 and I got in. And that in itself, I thought, going to Zurich was was an, was an opportunity, but wow, the innovator. There was 36 of us from around the world, um, all sat in one room, all with these different types of ideas about how technology can improve um, education. Um, and, and just working with these people for three, three days, nonstop, from morning right the way through to the point we were going to bed. And, you know, it was, it was really, 
intense but that that became our little family and even now what we're in 2022 now and, and we're still a very close-knit little group um so then i became a google innovator um and i launched the cpg dashboard that we have at our school that's now been incorporated by various schools we've won an award on that as well um and then from there i was approached by google to have a go at the coaching program now that's very new in the uk um to become a certified coach a bit like an instructional coach in the us um very, very different in the UK, um, but we're one of 24 in the UK to, to be approached for that. And, it, and again, I took that opportunity with both hands and, and, and went with it. What that allowed me to have an insight into is the pedagogy behind the EdTech. And it's not just a tool that you would use, it's the understanding as to why that tool will be important, um, aligning it with school goals, all those kind of aspects that as a management, you wouldn't, you know, you would, you would really think about it. But as somebody who's just training on on you on the use of an app, you wouldn't really think about it. So that really opened up those opportunities for me. Um, so that was my edtech in terms of certification um, <laughs> um, journey, um, and that then leads on to my school journey. So within school, I I started off with just being the um, Chromebook parental liaison. Okay, I've, so. I've not heard that role before. That's a new one. <laughs> I think all my roles were new because I think they were just thought off <laughs> um, on on the spot there. So basically, my job was to sell Chromebooks to the parents and, and get the buy in, um, as well as teaching science and everything else on the side of it. So I really spent two years or so just just really padding out these Chromebooks and and selling them to parents and. And, and using them in school. So we're one-to-one -one with Chromebooks in the, in the school that I was working in. And that then led to an EdTech lead kind of role within the school. I like to call it EdTech and not Google, simply because there, it's not just Google tools that we use in the school. It's a whole host of different type of technical tools that we might use. And that, that falls under the umbrella of EdTech. Um, and that then has led me this year to be seconded from the school to run the uh, EdTech across the trust. So I'm now leading the EdTech across four schools, two primary, two secondary. Um, and I'm absolutely loving my job. Um, but yeah, and that has then led to, to where we are today. Yeah, so like it won't, after hearing that, it won't come as any surprise that as Apps Events, <laughs> we're really quite excited to have you on board because we have got obviously experience of the boot camps the certifications and stuff that we offer so you're bringing in that expertise like you said about obviously trainer and innovator that massive network that you've developed there um and also with the coach when you said like connecting the pedagogy that is obviously something that um we hopefully pride ourselves on is is that that bridge technology and pedagogy and, and weaving that together nicely so obviously just adding so much value to all the things that we offer. Um, so it's really exciting for us. Um, now you may, you mentioned Zurich and summits, uh, and hopefully you'll forgive me for this, but, uh, we did, we do keep a lot of the old schedules that we have around. So here we have it, the European summit from 2016, and we have your session, uh, choices in there as well. So you can see some of the, the great things we used to do back then. So yeah, a good blast from the past. Um, but quite an interesting kind of obviously sort of uh, journey with apps events as well as, I know you've worked with many other kind mm. of um, PD and sort of tech providers as well. Um, so you're, you're also quite familiar with, with the world that we operate in too. One big takeaway I took from all of that was the network. So going to Zurich, seeing more schools doing different things, going to Innovator, meeting with people from all over the world and, and kind, of, kind of that seems to be the, the kind of the little spark each time is getting to see outside of your own kind of immediate world. Absolutely. I think that is that is a key to um, success, really, to get out and see what other schools are doing, what other communities are doing um, and to get an insight into how you can enhance what you are doing. 
um, and you can only get that from communicating with other people and seeing what, what they have on offer and listening to their stories. Um, and I was very, very lucky to not just constantly talk to teachers, but but be invited by Google to um, talk at uh, the Chromebook Summit events, for example, where all, they've got all their main um, partners coming in and, and, and talking to people from industry, from that from that aspect and being asked whether um, certain features within a Chromebook are useful or not. And things like that all make a big difference um, from a teacher perspective, because we are the ones who use use the products on a day-to-day -day basis. We are the users at the end of the day. Um, and to have our voice heard, that is, that is a really important thing. Um, so yeah, so I think the opportunities have been have been coming and I have been taking every single opportunity with both hands and saying yes I'll come and do that and it, and it does mean a bit of travel and it does but it's all well worth it. Now talking about the so obviously the network taking those opportunities it won't I mean many people watching will be uh, inspired by your story but it's fair to say there will be some people watching who are particularly interested to understand how you got to where you are because uh, you talked about going to edtech events. Um, we've both been to many, and it's probably very clear to people who've attended them that a lot of the people presenting and attending edtech events more often look like me than, <laughs> than look like you. So for those people watching who are thinking along those lines of like, this is really interesting. I'm really inspired by this. And we already need, there's a number of people we've worked with who've told me they're inspired to see you as an ed tech lead. It gives them uh, the ability to kind of keep on striving for more and more and more. So in that way, are there any tips or advice or, or words of encouragement for people who are watching and thinking, I want to follow in your, uh, in Zaytun's footsteps? Yeah, so, so you're absolutely right there, Ben. So I have, I have been and presented at events where I was literally the only Asian um, of it, you know, there. Um, and I've been to some events where I am one of maybe three females in the room. Um, and, it, and, it does, and it does make you think that, you know, there are so many females out there who are leading their way with technology and education and ed tech in general. And then there's so many Asian or diverse or inclusive people out there who are doing amazing things. And I think, Top tips from me would be just be yourself. From from when I've I've known Ben for a very long time now, from from the first day I met him to where I am now, I think I'm exactly the same. <laughs> I haven't changed. Um, so be yourself. Definitely get onto networking with with different communities. Uh, get onto Twitter. It's the best place to 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 meet people in your area, and yet you will not believe how many people are working in and around the same areas doing the same thing um, and just network with other people. And lastly, don't be afraid to ask. If you know there's an event going on and you have an, um, an experience in that event, reach out to people and say, well, I have this on offer or I can talk about this and, and let them come back to you um, and, and really get out there. And I think that, that is, that's my top three tips, I would say. Awesome tips as well. And I think the reaching out is really important. Like as a professional development provider for schools, um, the thing that adds value to the work that we do with schools is people like yourself who are in schools doing it. So as well as obviously the classroom teaching, which you did today, you're also looking strategically at those pedagogical goals and how the technology can support that. So for anyone who's doing that, for anyone that's trying stuff out in their classroom, um, you're probably doing things that we haven't thought of, that we haven't really considered, um, and therefore a little pitch of a session. Now, obviously, it's something that, we, like, if we go back to your uh, uh, European summit that we just showed, back when we were doing more of those in-person events, we had the option for people to submit a session that they wanted to do at this particular event. And that's where we got a load of our speakers who work with us now from. That has been harder to do with with the, the pandemic, but as we start to return to in-person sessions and the remote sessions, we're always open to suggestions. And obviously myself and Zaytun focusing on the UK and Ireland, will be thinking about what training and effective professional development looks and feels like 
in a post uh, post pandemic post pandemic world is one of those big phrases mm. that you throw out but now that we've gone through that i think the the skills and the professional development teachers need it is different to what we were doing in 2016 absolutely um, so we're going to be working to put out more and more offerings. Um, so, and we'd really love to hear from, from anyone who thinks they've got the opportunity to, to share some more uh, amazing sessions and, and we can work with you even more as well. So that's our aim. Um, we're going to be putting our heads together to come up with some exciting things for 2022. And uh, it's exciting for us because with, stay tuned, with your experience that covers all of the certifications, the schools that you're working with, um, your focus on pedagogy. It's a, it's a bright 2022 for me. So thank you so much for joining us and sharing. Um, and hopefully for everyone watching, an opportunity to meet one of the members of the team. Um, and if you're interested, then feel free to sort of let us know if you'd like to know a bit more about some of the other trainers that we work with as well. Um, so yeah. So Tina, anything you want to finish on before we leave? Um, I just want to say a huge thank you. I'm like super excited for this role. Um, and I'm sure you'll see a lot more of me. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Hope that was useful, and I'll catch you all soon. Bye.